everybody, this is Mrs. Ellsworth, and today we're going to be talking about stem and leaf plots. And stem and leaf plots, they are another unique way of organizing our data to make it so that we can find some measures of central tendency like mean, median, and mode, or maybe even some variation like, like the range or even some quartiles. So these are things that, that another way to help us organize our data. And it kind of um, makes it compact so that it's perhaps easier to use. But let's talk about what does this really mean. So let me get a pen here. Okay, so when you look at this, usually you're also given a legend somewhere near your, your, um, your stem and leaf plot. And it'll say something like this. I'll say a 2, and they'll have a line, and that line represents this guy right here, and then a 5. Okay, and I could have picked any numbers. I was just picking them because, hey, they looked handy. Okay, now those will equal 25. Okay, and anyway, so so what are we doing with that information? So let's let's think about what does all of this mean. So here's 25, here's 21, here's 20, here's 1. Now, this is not the best stem and leaf plot. In fact, it should be put in numerical order. So let's go and look at something here. This one is the same exact one, and it has, um, it's an example in your book. It has it in numerical order now, and notice that they didn't quit any leaf either. Um, if they had uh, more than one, two, then they showed them. Notice also that this zero represents 10, so, so they, didn't, they didn't disregard that either. So these are here all the ones digits. And these are all the tens digits. So you put them together and you can get a full whole number. Okay, so um, you should also include a key too. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, go ahead and get started with number five. We have a, our lesson and it is three through nine and I'm going to do five and seven for you. Okay, so we'll start with number five right away. So let's look at this. So we got some temperatures low temperatures in Fahrenheit. And so we're going to go and and take this data and we're going to put it into a stem and leaf plot. So let's get started. Let me grab a pen. Here we go. So there we go. So I noticed I got some ones for, for tens. I got some twos for twenties. And I've got some threes for thirties, and I don't see any forties there. So I got some tens, twenties, and thirties. Okay, so now I'm going to take this data and plot each one of them over here. And I think that um, that some people will go and put their numbers in order first. You know, like we set up for the median, they, they'll do that or they'll go in, plot it, and then they'll put their numbers in order. And that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and look at this. We've got five, 15, okay. We've got a 13. We've got 28. We've got 32. We've got a 38. Notice I'm just putting a space, not a comma between these. They just have a space between them and that is it. Okay, so. I was just making sure where I was at since I interrupted myself with talking. Here's a 30. Here's a 31. A 13. A 36, certainly got lots of 30s, 35, 38, 32, 38 again, a 24, excuse me, 24, and then a 20. Now, the smart thing to do here is to double check and count all of our numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus six more makes 15. And this is a three by five. So that's okay, good. Okay, so now we need to put those numbers in order to, to you know, complete our, our um, stem and leaf plot. It just so happens I have another one of these. How handy. <laughs> okay, so marker, where are you? 
There we go. Okay, so my tens, I've got a three, three, and a five. Okay, I've got zero, four, and eight. So I got 20, 24, and 28. <laughs> Oops, I have a new alarm out. Okay, and then I've got some 30s here. <laughs> I have a Zoom Zoom um, meeting, so I'm going to have to hurry here. So I got a 30, a 31, so I got 30, 31, and a 2, and a 2. And I've got... A six and a five next. And I've got an eight, eight, and eight. I think I counted nine here before. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's my stem and leaf plot. I've forgotten one thing. What is that? My key. Okay, so I'm going to write on here that two slash four. You could pick any of them. And that equals 24. Okay. So, oh, sometimes they put units on there too. Okay. So now we'll go on to number seven. Okay. Now we're ready to do number seven. This is the number of people who attended a school play. And so now you'll notice I've got three digit numbers up here. Oh dear. Well, still go and, and separate them. Before we had one a 1 and a 7 to represent 17. Well, now we might have a 1, 1, 7 to represent 117. Okay. So I see we've got some 22s, 23s, 24, 26s, and 27. So we got some 22s, 23. <laughs> Twenty-four. We still have to do twenty-five, even though it's not there. So I gotta do it. That's really good for helping you see some lumps and bumps in your data. Twenty-six and twenty-seven. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and mark these off and go ahead and put them on. So we got twenty-two and a five, so two hundred twenty-five. Okay, and then two hundred twenty-seven. Two hundred thirty. 229, 246, 243, 269, 269, 267, oh, and then 378s, uh, two, three 278s. Okay, so we don't have to do that much to, to we just got to fix these two. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get an eraser and do that. I'm going to switch the three and the six around. Okay. Three and a six. I'll get that now. And we can do a seven, nine, nine, seven, nine, nine. Seven, nine, nine. Okay. So that's our stem and leaf plot for this one. It's all in order. But I got some questions for you. When I look at problem number eight, it asks things like, um, what's the range? What's the median? What's the mode? Okay. And then also, of course, there's that old typical question that we keep on hearing, which measure of central tendency is the most affected by outliers? Hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. So if we would go and analyze this data, we could also figure out what our range is. Okay, so let me get a pen again here. So our range, we would take our biggest minus our smallest. So that's going to be 278 minus 225. Okay, and so we got a 3 and a 5. So it's 53. 53 people is, is our range. 
Okay, if they were going to ask, what is your median? Well, let's figure that one out too. Okay, so we'll cross off some numbers now. We've got to get a pen. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to mark off three from the end and three from this end. One, one, two, two. Oh, goodness. It's going to be between 246 and 267. So what do I do to find my median of these two? What do I do? Well, I add them up and I divide by the number of them. So let me pause this and we'll figure that out. Okay, when I went and calculated my median, I went and got out of there a 256.5. So that would be my median. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, man. I'll give up on circling that. I can't do it. Here we go. Okay, so there's my median. I figured out my range, my median. Um, I could figure out what else? Mean. I could figure out the mean. And the mean is not so exciting because the mean, um, I think, would be easier to go and add up these numbers that you're given and then dividing by, by um, 12 first. Okay, I think that that would be much easier to do it that way. Um, if you're given a stem and leaf plot, you could do it still. You just have to separate and figure out 278, 278, 278, 269, and keep on going. Okay, so you could do it. Now, another one that they could ask was your mode. And before I went and marked this all up, you would have probably seen 278 three times. Okay, so those are the types of questions that they'll ask you when they give you a already pre-done um, stem and leaf plot. Okay, so um, you have an assignment. It is page 528 and on. And and it's just problems three through nine. And I gave you two extra credit questions. Okay, and those are multiple choice, so it's kind of pretty nifty. So I will see you when I see you. Otherwise, I'll see you online. Okay, bye-bye.